Hey, this is Jonathan from Sinite Audio, and today we'll be looking at creating impulse responses from analog gear. Now, in this regard, I'm using the Neutron Synthesizer, and this will work with just about any synth. Well, I'd say really any synth, as long as it has a filter. Uh, it could even be just a Eurorack filter. Uh, I've done some with my MS-20, and today I'll be showing you uh, how to do them with the Neutron. So basic thing here, the only patch I have is coming from my hydrosynth, uh, I have the gate coming out of the hydrosynth going into the e-gate 1, which will trigger both envelope generators, uh, allowing for my amp envelope and what will be controlling the filter over time. So in terms of impulse responses, what we're looking at to generate them is white noise. So right now I have a simple clip in Ableton. Uh, it doesn't matter what note it is, but it's just sending a simple short burst uh, to the hydrosynth, which is outputting the gate to the neutron. That's all it is. So, but that's not really much of an impulse response. We already we have too much uh, frequency content in terms of tonality. So if we run anything through that, it's just going to sound more or less like a uh, sawtooth through the filter. So. What we're going to do on the patch is we're going to take the noise output of the neutron and we're going to go into the VCF input. So we want to emulate or to kind of get around um, using a white noise burst. Uh, impulse responses done in like let's say a real world space. You would either clap your hands, use a starter pistol, pop a balloon, use a, you can use a sweep tone as well. Uh, white noise bursts work just as well as well. You're going to get a different result, but um, you know, it's up to you however you want. So now if I just press uh, play in my Ableton, simple white noise burst, cool. So now we can get, uh, we can control the envelope from here. So let's go for more of a uh, small room size. So we're going to go for a very percussive envelope. increase the gain or the drive a bit. Don't want to clip. Alright, so, so now that we have that, we could actually make an IR of that as well, but if you want to do the tonality of the room, uh, we can use the onboard filter for that. So we're going to bring the filter down. To our endpoint. So this is going to be the endpoint of the room, so to speak. Let's say we want it right here. Or actually, let's go a little darker. Okay, that's perfectly fine. So now we will use the envelope depth to control the amount of this second envelope that will decay our high frequencies over time in the created room. So let's go, let's try doing the same envelope. Okay, that's a little too percussive. Let's go slower. Let's go darker on the room. Yeah, you want a nice burst. Opens her up. Now we can actually go a little bit higher on the drive. For some makeup gain. It doesn't matter because we're also going to be exporting with uh, normalization. Okay, cool. So let's say we like that. So all we need to do is record. Let me turn off this camera for a second. Alrighty. Uh, so now I have two tracks here. I've got IR left and right, so we can do stereo uh, stereo track or stereo impulse response. So how does this work with a mono source like the Neutron? Well, the Neutron, since it's analog and we're using analog noise, as in every time you play it, the noise has slight differences in frequency content over time. So you can record the exact same sweep twice, but because you're using the noise, 
that's constantly varying, you're going to get two separate uh, audio files. So if you pan one hard left, one hard right, you're going to get stereo information. So if we do, but you can also do a mono impulse response and run stuff through that. Um, we're just going to do stereo for here. So I'm going to record arm. I already have it coming in. You can see the level. And we're just going to hit record. Cool. Give it a bit of space to breathe. Hit stop. Dis record, uh, disarm the record on the left. Turn off that channel. Turn on the right. Record arm. And then hit record. Cool. So now we can enable both. Go to auto. And we're going to do some trimming and some editing. Make sure they start relatively around the same time. Doesn't have to matter all that much because, um, once again, you are dealing with analog signals. So you could do this with a pre-recorded um, sample of noise. Uh, that will give you, well, it will actually end up being different because you're using a pre-recorded noise sample. Uh, it's going to, the noise is going to play back exactly the same every time. So for pre-recorded noise bursts, um, those are good for digital uh, reverb units, like I have a quadriverb. Um, it's good to capture stuff from there because that already does stereo processing. So let's add a little bit of a fade at the beginning. First, let's hard pan, so I'm going to do the left to the left, right to the right. It's 50 on both sides. And we can already hear that. That's got a different timbrality. And that will actually lead to um, the left to right side possibly being a little louder because the frequency content is different due to the white noise again. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of a fade, a couple samples in for the start, and then the end trim. Let's do that here. So control E, delete that, and then we're just gonna add a little bit of a fade. And we're going to make that a little steeper towards the end. So now let's listen back. Okay, so all we have left to do is select both of these I'm gonna disable the MIDI track. I have a little, the little rock loop uh, with an M convolution easy uh, on it. So this is what we're gonna be using to uh, listen back to what we have here. So once again, just select both of these, do Control Shift R or File Export or Render. And we are going to normalize. Uh, I'm keeping it at 441 because that's what I have my session at. Uh, and we're gonna do Wave 24 bit. You could do 32 bit, but some convolution reverbs um, don't actually respond too well to that. So we're just going to stick a 24 and do uh, rectangular. It doesn't matter too much because it's just a white noise burst. Uh, so it'll actually, if anything, it'll add to the character of the impulse response. Uh, we're going to hit export and I already have a neutron folder here. I'm just going to put that in there. I'm going to call this uh, export uh, small. I guess for a small room. And now we can disable these two tracks. Go to enable our rock track, a uh, little rock loop. Okay. And we're going to open up M Convolution and we're going to go Neutron. And here's the export small. So this is our stereo uh, bounced impulse response from the Neutron's white noise. So I'm going to bring that in. Uh, watch your gain as well. Sometimes, uh, because due to the impulse responses, it might boost certain frequencies. Here we have a bit of good bit of low end, so you might want to uh, adjust your pre and post gain depending on how you're using this. But we have an easy, easy room, I guess.
and all it took was, I don't know, 10 minutes? Really? Not too bad. Yeah, pretty simple. Anyways, I'm Jonathan from Sunite Audio. I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, like and subscribe. Uh, there's tons of other content. Uh, oh, I didn't touch upon why I was using the Hydrosynth for the gate triggering. Uh, that's because you can also, on the Hydrosynth, you can use the mod matrix to output two envelopes, one on the mod one and one on the mod two. And you can have each one of those envelopes uh, move the neutron. So you can have mod one go to the VCA CV, that will be your overall amplitude. And then mod two, uh, I was using it to move the frequency mod of the filter to replace envelope two. Uh, I had that set up earlier and then I just kind of went back to keeping it simple. So that's why I don't have um, anything too complex set up. I want to show you just keeping it within the neutron, but you can, you can take the MIDI uh, straight into the neutron and then you don't even have to patch the E gate that will be automatic. Uh, anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have a nice day.